Now the author Himullah is going to go on to talk about the Shurut al-Siha. And so he says, Women Shurut al-Siha al-Sawm. Yani, here he's going to mention the conditions for soundness, which means he's going to mention those things that have to be present in order for a person's fast to be sound. So these are the conditions of soundness, meaning the conditions that have to be met in order for a person's fast to be sound. The first one he says, Aniyatu sabiqatu lil fajri sawa'un kana fardan aw naflan. He says, Aniyatu as sabiqatu lil fajri, having the intention that precedes the fajr, meaning that in order for a person to have a sound fast, he must have the niyyah that he's going to fast before the fajr comes in, which means if a person, technically speaking, were to, f were to sleep at night and then wake up in the day time or were to go to sleep at night without the niyyah to fast and then woke up in the daytime and did not find any food in his house and said, okay, I'm going to fast the rest of the day. Technically speaking, that would not be considered a fast even if he insisted on abstaining from food because the condition for a sound fast is that the niyyah has to be made before fajr. And before fajr doesn't mean that it has to be done right before fajr. It means that a niyyah for the following day, to fast for the following day, can be done any time after maghrib uh, before the following fajr. And he says, Sawa'un kana fardan aw naflan. And regardless of if it's a fard fast, a wajib fast, or a... Uh, nafila fast all of it has to be preceded by a niya that occurs before fajr occurs and then he says wa niyyatul wahidatu kafiyatun fi kulli sawmin yajibu tatabu'uhu ka siyam ramadan wa siyam kafarat al-zihari wa al-qatli wa al-nazri al-ladhi awjabuhu al-mukallafu ala nafsihi here he's mentioning what we talked about before, that one niya, that having one niya at the beginning of Ramadan is sufficient for all of Ramadan under the condition that it is uh, that there is no breaking of the obligation. So, in other words, any fast of more than one day that is obligatory, then one niya from the beginning of that fasting day or from the beginning of the first day of that fast will be sufficient for the rest of the fast. So for example, in Ramadan, if one makes a, a niya at the beginning of Ramadan, it is sufficient for a person to use that same niya for all of Ramadan as long as something does not occur that necessitates that the fast is no longer arg uh, oblig obligatory. And we gave the example of a woman who's menstruating or a person who's traveling. But he also goes on to mention Qasiyam Ramadan. And I just gave you examples like fasting in Ramadan was Siyam Kafarat al Zihar. Yani also fasting the Kafarat al Zihar, which is a specific type of uh, a divorce which we won't go into detail here, but when a person divorces in his uh, divorces his wife by a zihar, then it is if he cannot find a slave, if he wants to go back to his wife after this divorce is after this specific type of divorce is made, then he must go. He must free a slave. For example, that's the original rule that he must free a slave. But if he cannot find a slave, then he's requested, he's obligated to fast two months before trying to uh, return back to his wife. So if that fasting, the fasting for the two months here is obligatory. And so if he makes the, the niya at the beginning, then he doesn't have to make uh, a new fast for the whole two months. Because that fasting is obligatory. Another fasting that's obligatory is waqatli. Waqifarat al-qatli. A kafarat al-qatli is when a person kills somebody by mistake, by an accident. They're requested to free a slave. And if they, if they do not have 
a slave, then they are requested to uh, fast shahrani two months as well. And that fasting two months consecutively is obligatory. So if he, if he makes the intention to fast at the beginning of the day, I mean at the beginning of the first fast, then that will be considered sufficient. And then he mentions, وَالنَّذْرِ أَلَّذِي أَوْجَبُهُ الْمُكَلِّفِ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Nadri, as we mentioned before, swearing by something. For example, the person said, I swear by Allah that in June I'm going to fast for a whole month. Then in this case, at the beginning of June when he makes his niyyah, then it is not obligatory for him to make a niyyah for every other day because the fast is fasting consecutively. Day after day is obligatory. Therefore, one niyyah is sufficient. And then he says, وَأَمَّا السِّيَامُ الْمَسْرُودُ وَالْيَوْمُ الْمُعَيْنُ فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ التَّبْيِيتِ فِيهِ كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ He says, وَأَمَّا السِّيَامُ الْمَسْرُودُ What he means by masrood, al-masroodu, meaning the consecutive fasts, fasting consecutively, but for nafila purposes. For example, a person who just has the intention to fast Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That's a siyam al-masrood. Then that person would have to make a niyyah each day, because in this case, the fasting these three days consecutively is not obligatory. Therefore, he has to make Aniya for each day. Waliyomul Mu'ayyanu. Waliyomul Mu'ayyanu, for example, a person who always has the norm or the custom of fasting every Wednesday. Every time Wednesday comes around, he has to make a new niya. And the and the even if he's fat even uh, if he's doing it more than once, as I mentioned, as it's a custom, it's not sufficient because fasting i mean because the fasting that he's doing every wednesday is not it's not obligatory that it's done consecutively so therefore he has to make the niyyah uh, every time he's going to do it so he says fala budda min tabyiti fi kulla laylatin and thus it is obligatory on him to make the niyyah at the night that's what tabyit means to make the niyyah at uh, to intend to fast fi kulla laylatin in every night and then he mentions it goes on other things from Shurut al Siha and he mentions wa min Shurut al Siha al Sawmi an Naqa'u min dam al Haydi wa Nifasi that a person be free from menses and nifas. So which means that if a woman a woman in the state of menses and uh, a woman in the states of menses are postnatal bleeding, then just as she is not obligated to fast her fast wouldn't be sound even if she were to fast. So in reality, an naqa'u is from, from shurut al siha and it's also from shurut al wujub And what do we mean by shurut al wujub Those things that have to be there in order for the fast itself to be obligatory. So for a woman to be in the state of fasting, she's not obligated to fast, nor will it be sound if she were to do it. Then he says, for in kata adamu al-haydi wa nifasi qabla al-fajri wa law bilahdatin wajiba alayha sawmu dhalika wa law lam taqtasil illa ba'd al-fajri. Here is another important point that women should not get mixed up that the ending of menstruation and making ghusl are two different things. So what he says here is that if for in kata adamu al-haydi wa nifasi if the menstruation blood were to stop and or the postnatal bleeding were to stop qabla al-fajri before the fajr walaw bilahdatin even if by a moment before fajr wajiba alayha sawmu dhalik al-yawm it is obligatory for her to fast that day walaw lam taqtasir even if she didn't make the ghusl so the fact that she didn't make the ghusl doesn't matter as long as she's not menstruating then she's obligated to fast so just a point of menses that has to be understood that it is obligatory in the Malikiyah for a woman to check her menses for every prayer. So in this case, what we're concerned with, concerned with is Fajr. So it is obligatory for a woman sometime during the time of Fajr to check to see if she's menstruating to know whether or not she has to pray Fajr or not. But in the case of fasting, it is not obligatory for her to wake up and look to see if she's bleeding before Fajr. So understand the difference. She is not requested to wake up before Fajr 
to check to see if she's still bleeding to see if she has to fast or not. This Miss Ella is just in regards to the case when uh, a woman were to see that she finished fasting before Frederick came in. The reason why he mentions this Miss Ella is because some women might think if she were to stop bleeding, but she didn't make a ghusl, then she wouldn't have to fast. So he's only clarifying the point that she would have to fast because all that matters is that she's not menstruating and that she's uh, not in the state of postnatal bleeding. Then he says, What to add when near to Eden Kata at the Tabu, Obin, Marad, Wal Haidi, when Nifasi, was Shib Hidari, was Shib Hidari. This is another important point that I mentioned to you before. I mentioned, as we mentioned again, that if the fasts that are obligatory to be fasted consecutively, if they're broken by something that necessitates that the fasting is no obligatory, when that thing is removed and the fasting in Ramadan becomes obligatory again, they must make the new niya. That's obligatory. That's why it says, what to add niya to, then they have to repeat the niya. Idan kata atta tabu'u. If the consecutive fasting is cut, bil marad by sickness or menstruation or nifas, was shibhi dalik. And anything that is like that. What does it mean? All he is, is all he's doing is giving you examples of those things that break the obligation of fasting. So that when the obligation returns, it is obligatory for the person to continue uh, to make a new niya before continuing their fast. Women shuru to sihatisomi and also from the things that are obligatory during so much is the third one, al aqlu. Yani having mental ability. فَمَنْ لَا أَقْلَ لَهُ كَالْمَجْنُونِ وَالْمُغْمَ عَلَيْهِ لَا يَسِحُ مِنْهُ الصَّوْمُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْحَالَةِ So he says, an example, فَمَنْ لَا أَقْلَ لَهُ Whoever doesn't have mental stability or comprehension, كَالْمَجْنُونِ A person who is possessed by jinn, for example, وَالْمُغْمَ عَلَيْهِ Or a person who was, yani who was fainted, yani who fainted, for example, Fainted after Maghrib and is still uh, and is still faint. La yisihu min husomu fi dalik al halati. Then his his fasting wouldn't be considered sound. Right. So, for example, a person before Fajr was uh, began to faint, for example, or fainted, or a person who was affected by a jinn when he. Uh, when the time of Fajr came in, then the the uh, fast would not be considered sound because al-aqlu, meaning mental awareness, is considered a condition for the soundness of prayer. I mean, for the soundness of the fast, and that's why it says wa yajibu ala al-majnuni ida ada ilayhi aqluhu walau ba'da sinina. كَثِيرَةٍ أَنْ يَقْضِيَ مَا فَاتُهُ مِنَ السَّوْمِ فِي حَالِ جُنُونِهِ وَمِثْلُهُ الْمُغْمَ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا فَاقَ That's why it says here, in this case, since they, they weren't awake during the fast, they didn't have the mental awareness, it is obligatory for them to make that fast up. They have to make qada after Ramadan. That's why it says, وَيَجِبُ عَلَى الْمَجْنُونِ, على المجنون It is obligatory on the majnoon إِذَا عَادَ إِلَيْهِ أَقْلُهُ When his uh, mental awareness comes back even after even if it's after many years and to make to make up those fasts that missed him while he was in the state of being possessed by a jinn for example and the same thing goes for the person who uh, had fainted once he wakes up then he goes on to the next thing was saying women shuru to sihat as sawmi tarku al jima'i wal aqli wa shurbi the sub- abstaining from sexual intercourse and eating and drinking faman fa'ala fi nahari ramadan shay'an min dhalika muta'ammidan min ghayri ta'wil al qareeb wala jahl fa 'alayhi al qada'u wal kaffaratu okay here's the important thing 
we all we've been talking about recently is making up the the missed prayer but here we're going to talk about making up i mean making up the missed fast but here we're going to talk about making up the missed fast and paying the penalty of kafara in our school paying the penalty penalty of kafara kafara is when a person eats or drinks or has sexual intercourse intentionally uh, intentionally, a person who intends to do that intentionally, he'll have to make up that day of fasting and he'll have to pay the penalty of kafara, which we will define uh, shortly. So he says, فَمَنْ فَعَلَ uh, Meaning, فَمَنْ فَعَلَ Whoever does one of these three things, فِي نَهَارِ رَمَضَانِ In the daytime of Ramadan, شَيْئًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ مُتَعَمِّدًا That he did it intentionally, not if he did it forgetfully. Because if a person were to have sexual intercourse or eating or drinking out of forgetfulness, then they would only have to make up that prayer. I mean, they would only have to make up that fast, but they wouldn't have to make up kafara. And he says, مِنْ غَيْرِ تَعْوِيلٍ قَرِيبٍ وَلَا جَهْلٍ And that is under the condition that that person is going to have to make kafara under the condition that they didn't do it with a valid interpretation or a valid, a valid interpretation. Understand what this point means here and why it's very important. Because we have two different types of people who can do, who do it intentionally. Some people do it intentionally because they had a misunderstanding. And then there's people who do it intentionally because they did it intentionally. People who did it intentionally, yani purely intentionally, they're going to have to make kafara. But the people who did it with a sensible excuse, for example, a person who was fasting. And here's a valid excuse of a person who did it intentionally. A person, is, they started traveling. And they thought that they reached the distance of a traveler. And so they thought it was permissible for them to break their fast. And it was permissible for them to break their fast. But then they found out that they didn't travel the distance. They made a mistake in their understanding of distance meaning that they thought they traveled a certain amount of distance, but they didn't travel that. They traveled less, which technically speaking, they weren't considered travelers. Then in that case, they would be uh, they would be excused, so they would only have to make qada and not kafara. Or another example would be uh, a woman who her menses stopped, but... She thought because Fajr came in and she didn't make a ghusl yet that she would have that she didn't that her, uh, she didn't have to fast because she didn't have enough time to make ghusl before uh, before the time of Fajr came in. She'll have to make qada, but she won't have to make kafara because her misunderstanding would be accepted. Now the next one that he mentions is wala jahlin. For example, a person who did it out of ignorance and the example that they give what they mean out of ignorance doesn't mean any Muslim who does it out of ignorance because as we mentioned before, Muslims are expected to know the things that are far in ayin. When we say out of ignorance, we're referring to a person who is new to Islam. They call him Hadith Ahdin. A person who is new to Islam who didn't know that he couldn't have sexual intercourse for example. So for example, he became Muslim. Uh, the people, they told him about fasting, but he didn't know that he couldn't have sexual intercourse or, or so on and so forth. Or he thought, or he really thought that he had to fast, but only fast enough that, but if he became very hungry, then he can have a glass of water, for example. Then that person, although they would be obligated to make qadal, they wouldn't be obligated to make kafara. So he says, so then he says, فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءُ kafara. Then it is obligatory on this on this person that we mentioned who did it intentionally it is obligatory for them to make qada and kafara so going back yani just to seal up this point so it's clear the person who does something muta'amidan without i mean intentionally without any acceptable excuse and understand that an acceptable excuse is not something that you and me assume to be an acceptable excuse, and accept the accept the acceptable excuses are are mentioned by numbers in the books of fiqh. And I gave you an example of the traveler and the one of the menstruating woman. So it's not for 
me and you to assume all well, this is a valid excuse and this is not a valid valid excuse. This is something technical and is covered in the books of fiqh. So if that person were to do this thing intentionally without, without any valid excuse or misunderstanding or he wasn't a new Muslim who did it out of ignorance for not knowing something, then this is where a person is going to make qada and kafara along with the qada. Then he's going to mention what kafara is. Well, kafara to fi dhalika kullihi it'amu sitina miskinan muddan li kulli miskinan bimuddin nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama وَهُوَ أَفْضَلُ وَلَهُ أَنْ يُكَفِّرَ بِعِتْكِ رَكَبَةٍ مُؤْمِنَةٍ أَوْ بِالسِّيَامِ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنِ In our school, kafara, which means it's a penalty that a person pays for breaking their fast intentionally without a valid excuse, is to feed 64 people one mud. لِكُلِّ مِسْكِينٍ A mud is... Bimuddin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our school the meaning of a mud is four handfuls of food. And how do we determine a handful? By putting our two hands together, not opening them too far and not closing them too close together. Just the way like you, you put your hands together to scoop water, not too many, not too much closed and not too much open. This is, this is, uh, four of these is considered, I mean, one of these is considered a mud, meaning a handful. So one of these, a person is obligated to feed a person 60 people, one mud of food. So a handful of rice to 60 different poor people. And you cannot feed the same person twice. Right, and so what people don't understand is they say that they can't find 60 poor people. But the reason why the, this penalty is given is because a person who breaks their uh, breaks their fast intentionally has to work hard to repay it up. So you can't just say hey, take the 60, take the the the, the 60 muds together, and then just go give it to one person. That would be too easy. Right, that would be too easy. Everybody would then you know, break their fast intentionally if they knew that all they had to do was do that. But when you have to try to find 60 people and feed them a handful of food, or even more, the handful is the least amount, then a person will take, you know, breaking his fast intentionally serious. So that's what it means when it says, It'amu sitina miskin, and to feed four, I mean to feed 60 poor people, mudden, one mud which means yani, a scoop with two hands of food, the kulli miskinin, which means it has to only be one handful for, for each person. So if you were to give two or three to, to uh, one person, then the second and the third one wouldn't count. Bimuddin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa huwa afdalu. In our school it is considered it is considered the best thing to do as opposed to the other two things that I'm going to mention. And the second one is that a person can pay his kafara by freeing a slave. Or by fasting 60 consecutive months. I mean, 60 consecutive days or two months to be, to be more exact. So, Either a person can feed 60 people, which he mentions here is the best thing to do. All right? So there's no obligation to do one over the other. In some other schools, it's obligatory to fast the two months first. And it is only permissible to go to the other things if uh, one doesn't have the ability to complete the fast. And I believe that is the Hanafi school. But according to the Malikiyah, one has a choice to choose any which one of these three that he wants, but feeding the poor is better. Then he goes on to say, وَمَا وَصَلَ مِنْ غَيْرِ الْفَمِ إِلَى الْحَلْكِ مِنْ أُذْنٍ أَوْ أَنْفٍ أَوْ نَحْوِ ذَلِكَ وَلَوْ كَانَ بُخُورًا فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءُ فَقَدْ Then he mentions here that if something were 
to enter the stomach or reach the stomach from other than the mouth. Or my bad, if something were to reach the throat by other than the mouth, فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءُ فَقَطْ Then it is only obligatory on that person to make qada. And the examples that he gives you, for example, if water reaches your throat from the ears or from the nose, وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ Then it is only obligatory, I mean then it is only obligatory for a person to make qada and not kafara. So actually what the author is referring to here is he's referring to uh, something that reaches the throat intentionally. So we just mentioned if a person were to eat and drink intentionally, then he would have to make kafara. But in this case, if something were to reach the throat from the ears or the nose, وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ And anything like it, meaning any other part from the mouth, aside from the mouth, then وَلَوْ كَانَ بُخُورًا Even if it was smoke. What do you mean smoke? Like smoke from food. فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءُ فَقَدْ Then it is obligatory for him to make قَضَاءُ فَقَدْ without having to make kafara. Then he mentions something here by saying وَمِثْلُهُ الْبَلْغَمُ الْمُمْكِنُ تَرْحُهُ uh, then he mentions the spit in the mouth. This remaining spit that is in the mouth, if it was possible for a person to spit it out, if they were to swallow it, they would have to make qada, but that is a weak opinion in the school, and there's no practice by it. So even if a person were to swallow a... Uh, if a person were to swallow his spit, then it wouldn't be obligatory for him to make qada. And the same goes for the swallowing of, I mean, the same goes for the smoke. If a person were to take and smoke through the ears or or so on and so forth, or through the, uh, through the nose, then... It wouldn't nullify their it wouldn't nullify their fasting and it's not obligatory for them to make qada. وَالْغَالِمُ مِنَ الْمَضْمَضَةِ وَالسِّوَاكِ وَكُلُّ مَا وَصَلَ إِلَى الْمَعِدَةِ وَلَوْ بِالْحُكْنَةِ الْمَائِعَةِ وَكَذَا مَنْ أَكَلَ بَعْدَ شَكِهِ فِي الْفَجْرِ لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ فِي جَمِيعِ ذَلِكَ كُلُّهُ إِلَّا الْقَضَاء Then he's going to give another uh, some more examples of things that necess- necessitate Qada, but don't necessitate al-kafara. Wal-ghalibu min al-madmadati was siwak. Wal-ghalibu min al-madmadati means means the water that reaches your mouth when you're washing it. So, for example, you were washing your mouth with water, and water went to the back of your throat by accident, or siwak, or the juice from the miswak went down your throat, or maybe even the wood from the miswak went down your throat, or وَكُلُّ مَا وَصَلَ إِلَى الْمَعِدَةِ Or anything that reaches the stomach Or anything that reaches the stomach بِالْحُكْنَةِ الْمَائِئَةِ يعني what he means by بِالْحُكْنَةِ الْمَائِئَةِ Is a type of in the, in the, uh, Back in the older times And I'm not sure if it still exists today When there was a certain sickness inside the stomach They used to inject something through the anus In order for the medicine to reach the stomach if a person were fasting, technically speaking, if that were to reach his stomach, then he wouldn't be obligated. He wouldn't be. Uh, he wouldn't be obligated to do anything except make qada, and it wouldn't be. Uh, a person wouldn't be obligated to make uh, kafara. And also, it should be known that even doing that act is disliked, but it is permissible when there's necessity. Meaning, when a person is sick and it's going to cure them, then it is permissible. But the the origin of the rule is that it would be makru if there was no reason. And then he says, وَكَذَا مَنْ أَكَلَ بَعْدَ شَكِّهِ فِي الْفَجْرِ Also, a person who ate أَكَلَ بَعْدَ شَكِّهِ فِي الْفَجْرِ A person who had shak, yani whether it was fajr or not. So a person ate and, and while he was eating, he had shak whether it was fajr or not. Then that person would also have to make qada and not kafara. Same thing when it goes to having doubt in 
Maghrib. So, for example, the person ate and then realized, I'm not really sure if I ate before Maghrib or after Maghrib. I think I ate early by an accident. Or the same thing for Fajr. Then this would necessitate that a person make Qadha, but it wouldn't be, uh, a person wouldn't have to make, uh, in this case, a person wouldn't have to make Al Kafara. Then he goes to mention those things that are not that don't necessitate qada, but the reason why he's mentioning them is because a person might assume that uh, they have to make qada. So he just so here he's just mentioning the things in order to clarify that these things don't necessitate qada. So he says, "Wala yalzamhu al-qada fi ghalibin min zubabin aw ghubar tariqin aw daqiqin aw kayli jibsin li sani'ihi." Yani a person who swallowed a fly, for example, for example, this happens for people who are outside and they were doing some type of work, and it mentions fi ghalibin min zubabin. Yani were to swallow some type of flying. Uh, a fly or something like that that wouldn't necessitate that their fast is broken are the dust from the air for example in middle eastern countries a lot of the time it's the, a lot of dust in the air or you're working on a construction site then inhaling the air would not notify the fast and a person who's working in a dough factory there's usually particles floating in the air that wouldn't notify their that also wouldn't notify the fast Kaili Gibson Lisanihi Gibson is uh is plaster but what they're what they're referring to generally is one who weighs Kaili Gibson Lisanihi like a person who works inside of a factory with substances that are present in the air, for example, like a person who works in uh in a cement factory. When the scent, when the cement bags and all that is moved around, then you usually have particles in the air. Breathing that in would not uh, notify one's fast at all either. And also, we talked about the hukna that goes inside the anus, but what were the, are the rectum? But in terms of one going into the the genital section of a male, that wouldn't nullify the fast wala fi duhni ja'ifatin duhni ja'ifatin is when let's say a person had a stomach injury in which they were their stomachs were cut open for example somebody had an injury they were stabbed or something in a hospital and the duhni actually means a type of oil so putting the oil inside the stomach or any type of substance here they're talking about something that existed in their time are putting any type of substance in the stomach in order to in order to uh, cure it, for example. A person had a big gouge in the stomach and they put something in there in order to cure or to clean out. That would not be considered one of the things that nullify the fast.